my devotion. Hello, everybody. We have a new interview today with a gorgeous woman, a lady. Thank you very much, Sherry, for this opportunity, for this interview. How are you? I'm doing just great, Lataro. Thank you. Oh, fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Well, first, I want to start, uh, you know, about your beginnings. Tell us about your beginnings uh, with the Supremes, this fantastic group from the 60s, 70s. Well, I joined the Supremes in 1973, and I replaced Jean Terrell, who had replaced Diana Ross mm -hmm. as lead singer. And uh, I joined with the original member and founder, Mary Wilson, the late Mary, great late Mary Wilson, and, um, and Cindy Birdsong, who had replaced Florence Ballard. Mm -hmm. And um, we toured all over the world. You know, I was born and raised in Detroit, as Diana and uh, Mary were also. And But it gave me a chance to tour all over the world, and even we came to Argentina, I'm sure, yeah. yeah so yeah. many places, the Orient, yeah, everywhere, everywhere. So yes. it was just an amazing uh, thing for me. Yes. And was it easy to be part of a group or project so popular worldwide? It was so it happened so quickly i didn't even have a chance to really get nervous at first when i first got the message from mary that we'd like you to come out to los angeles and uh, join the supremes what had happened my boyfriend at the time was lamont dozier mm -hmm. of holland dozier holland fame and he had gone out to uh, california on a business trip and he saw mary at an, an event and she told him that gene terrell had just left the group and they were looking for another lead singer so he suggested me so i uh she called me and I sent uh, a couple of albums of the glass house and pictures of me. And then uh, a few days later, she called, it was a Thursday night and she called and said, I would love for you to come to Los Angeles. And I said, well, when? She said, Saturday, I've got your ticket at the airport <laughs> waiting. I said, what? <laughs> and so then I said, well, okay. And then later on, I told my mother, I mean, Lamont was ecstatic. My best friends, Walter and Barbara Gaines, they were ecstatic because I was over to their house. But when I got home, I told my mother and she was so happy. I said, but I'm scared. The Supremes are too big. No, I can't do it. And she gave me that mother talk, pep talk. And so Saturday I was on that plane and Cindy Birdsong and her husband, Charles, picked me up from the airport and we went straight to Mary's house, suitcases and all. And we started rehearsing. And then I found out well, we have a yeah, we have a gig the, uh, the following Saturday in uh, New Mexico State Fair. I said, what? I have to learn all this stuff in a week, less than a week, really. Wow. Routines, songs, lyrics, everything. But so I really didn't have a chance to get nervous until after that first show when I did it. And the Bill Loeb, who was our manager at the time, came to me. He said, well, you did it. We loved it. You're in. Mm -hmm. When you started your solo career, um, you feel that was the right way? Well, I guess it was the only way. Um, after um, uh, Cindy Birdsong left the group in uh, 76 and Sue Say Green came right in. She was the last Supreme. Mm -hmm. And she had um, come to us via oh, Ray Charles. She had sung with him and Stevie Wonder for years. And she was just wonderful. So um, it was Mary Sue Say and me. And we did our last show in 77 in England, mm -hmm. in London. And Mary left the group, and then Suse and I were to carry on the group. And we looked for a third singer, and we found a dear friend of mine I told Suse about. And Suse had lunch. We had lunch with Joyce Vincent, who had been formerly with Tony Orlando and Dawn. And uh, Suse loved her, so we picked uh, Joyce Vincent and told Motown. And then somewhere from up high, and Edith came down and said, well, since there was no longer an original member in the group, they decided they would retire the name, the Supremes, to mm -hmm. retire the group. So Suse and I were like, what are we going to do? So Suzanne DePass just said, well, why don't you sing together as a duo? So Suse and I came together and we did an album called Partners. We wrote all the songs produced and um, along with Gene McDaniels, who was the executive producer, as, as well as Suzanne DePass. And we put that album out. But then after that, um, I did go solo when uh, Motown didn't renew our contract. Mm -hmm. They regretted it later, but uh, so I had no choice. And that's when uh, Rick Giannatis came 
and said, well, I want to do some disco songs on you. Yeah. And that started it off. And then Rick did One Night Only, and then we just went on and on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> so nice, so nice. Um, looking for a personal answer, you know, if you could go back in time, uh, would you change something or not of your life? Well, you know, you always have regrets. I should have, I should have, I could have. Um, I think my worst thing was fear. Mm. not being confident enough to do more than what I could have done and um, not following through because I didn't have the confidence. So I would have changed some things, but you know, God has always been over my life, I know, and um, he directs our paths and um, he gives us a second chance. Maybe I didn't take those chances. I, I won't know. I mm -hmm. won't know. But uh, you can't have regrets. I mean, you can, but you can't ponder on the regrets. You just have to move on, move on, keep moving. I mean, we all have dreams, we all have desires. And um, I know I didn't fulfill everything I wanted to do, but um, who knows? Who knows? I'm 76, I'll be 77 in November. Oh. <laughs> I don't have a lot of time left, but- No, uh... <laughs> come on, a lady, a lady. <laughs> I listened to um, Free My Soul, this amazing song. I really love it. I really love it, this new single that you did. Uh, tell us about it and your projects for the future. We want to know. Free My Soul is more like a up-tempo disco kind of song, yeah. and um, which um, I'm getting away. I'm too old to be doing stuff like that. But younger people appreciate it in the clubs. They appreciate it. So I appreciate that they appreciate it. <laughs> so, but, um, you know, you have to be stay current and give the people what they want. And so that's what uh, we try to do. Yes. Nice. And um, tell us about your new projects for this year. Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I know Rick has some things lined up. We haven't been able to go to the studio yet because of uh, different things that have been happening that, uh, you know, with the COVID and so forth, we have so many restrictions here, mm -hmm. but things are opening up. And um, so we will be back in the studio doing a lot more things. And I also write screenplays and stage plays. So I'll have to get back into that, concentrate on that. I sort of steered away. In fact, I had a, a stage play that was being presented April 19th of last year. Mm -hmm. And it was canceled at the last minute because of the pandemic. But yeah. um, we're slowly coming, slowly getting back there. A message for all the fans, for all your fans around the world, you know, South mm -hmm. America, Asia, Europe. Well, you know, we have one life to live, so live it to the most, the utmost always stay grounded. I know we all get depressed, especially lately what's been going on. I know I have sometimes deeply, deeply depressed, but um, we have to fight against it. Think about your dreams, your desires, and concentrate on that. Maybe this day was a bad day, but there's always tomorrow. There's always another tomorrow and then another tomorrow. So if you fall down, you can get up and try again. Don't ever, don't ever give up. Don't let the enemy talking to your ear because he'll tell you he came to steal, steal, kill and destroy. He's a liar. He's a liar. You look up, higher up and know that your blessings or your blessings are there. Just just wait for them, work for them. You take one step and God will take another one. Just just do it. Just go for it. Smile. Even if you don't feel like smiling, maybe you might get a phone call from a friend or somebody who will uplift you or you'll read something or see something on TV. And if you watch too much TV, especially the news, that'll really yeah. depress you. So sometimes you don't need to watch too much of the news, but just remember that you can you can make it. You could do it. You could do it. You, dream big. Don't dream small. And so what? Take a baby step. It might take a whole lot of baby steps, but eventually you'll get there. Yeah. So for with me, I'm going to get back into my music. I had stopped writing music, stopped writing my plays, but a voice has been talking to me. The voice of God has been talking to me. Say, come on, Sherry, come on now. And you've got to tell yourself, even you, Lakato, don't give up. Don't give up. There's, yeah. there's a lot out there. There's a lot waiting for you. And time waits on nobody. So you have to take advantage of that. 
fantastic your words you know uh, thank you very much for this opportunity again i love it all, all 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 the questions all the things that you said was very important they were very important so uh, thank you very much sherry uh, for your time thank you to rick genatos too for this uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> yay for rick thank yeah. you rick oh, greetings, greetings to rick out. <laughs> yeah <laughs> everybody thank you very much for watch this interview thank you very much again sherry i wish you all the best yeah, with, with, in the future you know with all your projects and just keep in Grazie. touch keep in touch it was a, it was an honor thank you bye bye everybody bye bye ciao ciao bella. <laughs>